Hi, uh, everyone. Uh, I'm Chu Xin. I was here for the first session. Now I'm here for the sort of last session. Okay, so uh, I heard everyone should reach this page already. So you should have a login page. And uh, after login, let me, let me check. Can I, can I just log in? Okay, if you are not at this page, uh, let, let me try it. Yes, you can do the copy and paste. So, uh, I assume everyone have access to this Google Drive. So, okay, so what, what happens here is, uh, oh my notes, ah, this guy shouldn't be there. Okay, so I assume everyone. Okay, uh, let's uh, close this guy. Okay, so this is my. Okay, ah, our Google Drive folder. Uh, here, if you don't have the code, the latest code, you can follow the instructions here. Ah, uh, let me. Come on, I don't want to do this. Uh, I have actually I have the exactly copy yeah, not the really me. Yeah. Uh anyway. Uh if you go open that file you will have a link. So uh it's linked to the GitHub I set up for this session. Uh what happens here is uh if you go to the tag 0.0.1 .0 it should cover up uh, all the previous sessions there. And if you are not very familiar with uh, Git, you actually can do is uh, similar I think, uh, online. You actually can create a new workspace. Come on, come on. Open it. Uh, Anyway, uh, if you open the, the readme file, you can create a new workspace with a link point to my GitHub. That way you will set for today. So you don't need to worry about uh, what's there for. Yeah, so here. So you can just copy over the link uh, here. And uh, after doing that, uh, you need switch to the correct tab. Tab. So the command is git uh, checkout uh, tab slash the tab name. I think we, we don't know how to use Okay. I, uh, <laughs> just make sure everyone have this page. Uh, the login page here. Let me drag it. Uh, it's in the go to the Google share folder. It should it should be including in this file. You probably need to download it. Actually, it's a text file. I don't know why. I it's not done, so you need to download and text. Yeah. Mm, let me see. I should have a local copy somewhere. Uh, I don't. Okay. If you are not sure, you can follow the instruction here. Actually, it's similar. So once you clone the whole thing, you do a uh, git checkout tags slash the tag ID. You want to move closer to the screen? Okay. Then after that, because it's new project. Uh, you need to make sure your database is properly set up. So this is an easy way. You just do a rack DB reset. I think you should be familiar with uh, rack DB migrate, right? So anyone can tell me what does the uh, rack DB migrate does? Will key in that command. Anyone? So. Okay, so what happens is when you're doing the migrate, uh, if you go to your project file, you will see this, the migrate folder. 
it will go through this file one by one based on the ID in front of it. And it will set up your database. But uh, what we have here is a bit different from uh, DB migrate, it's called DB reset. So it assumes you already have a database set up. What it does, it will do a drop and set up. So drop means uh, you're going to delete all the database you have in the, all the table you have in the database. Then during the setup, actually it will do a load and a seed. Load means it will set up all the schema, all the migration stuff you do, and the seed, and uh, you should have this file too, which is the seed file. It will prepare your database to a uh, initial state with some data you can test with. So uh, after that, after that, uh, actually you should do a real uh, server instead of C. Uh, this is something I want to show you today. Has other tutor show you what's the real console? Okay, so you know what it does, right? And uh, the rack rods command. Good. Ah. So, uh, everyone should have, once you run the running command, uh, on, on Cloud9, you should run with the port number and the, uh, where is it? Okay, here is my command. So I do a uh, git checkout the text, and uh, then I didn't do the database migration because I know my database is set up to date. Then I do a uh, reels with the port number and IP address. So here we go, we have, uh, not this one. Ah, this one. Okay. So, uh, first of all, I haven't been able to like migrate the D to because I missed like a lesson in between. So I just okay. So what you need to do is uh, just create a new. Create a new workspace. Yes, and uh, provide the link I have in the documents. Uh, the link actually should be, let me see. Uh, gi gi uh, ah, this one. Let me try to download that file so I can show it to everyone. So this is a step for the initial setup. If you have the project running, just try to sign in with some data. I think I'm going to use uh, this one, apple at gmail.com. Let me get back to you. Uh, the command is uh, 
it's not here. So, uh, okay, this is a command. The command is uh, rack db. First of all, I need to get through the uh, Google Doc, which I don't know why it's not oh, Okay. Uh, I can. Otherwise, I could just like copy that link off. Yeah. So I can I... just start <laughs> something. Um, let me, let me, let me, let me. Can, can you see this one? Yep. You can just type it into okay, the. Perfect. you get the workspace, it will show something like, uh, you will have something like this. Then you just key in the command over there. Oh, we can help with you later. Let's continue. So just uh, make sure everyone can log in and you can see this page. And uh, if you clone it, you probably will see Amber's name here because I actually copied from her. So if you want, you can change that. Uh, if you are using your existing project, you should be okay with it. Uh, then you need to do that. Okay, so you do check out the next one. So we need to do a uh, uh, right key in the Okay. It's okay, we just get started. You need to bundle your stuff first. Yeah. I forget. Yeah. So it, it says actually if you do DB uh, reset, it will say some dependency is missing. It's because we didn't do bundle your stuff. Yes. So let's go to the events. Uh, everyone should see this. And uh, if you just click on the show events, it should be something similar to this one. Uh, any of you play with this page, try something like click on this one and uh, do update and attendance it works right but anyone try this so actually there's a bug in the code in the code base so today we're going to fix this bug first mm. 
everyone gets this error or it's just me got this error. Wait for those people still doing with the bundle. Uh, people at the second row, can you guys see this error? What? Oh, you guys, everyone is waiting for the bundle. In terms of programming and the rails, what we'll do other than Google? And before the, actually before you Google, what do you know? What's the right question you are asking in Google? Without the error message. That's a good cool start. I so, actually try to see what they're recommending you to do. Yes, Usually yes. Usually they will say yes. like, you can try this. Yes, that's, that's, that's good. Okay. So, one thing is uh, what's showing here, the error message you are showing. I mean, real is showing. Another thing is you can look at is uh, in the log. So, it, it gave a lot of information, but the point is uh, some points in life, you need to know how to interpret and understand what's in the log. And we will come back to this log uh, more later today. And uh, for now, we can actually just focus on ah, our error message here. You waiting for, okay. And, uh, Another thing about Google is uh, you need to know what you are asking. So other than the error message here, certain uh, knowledge, terminology you need to pick up during the process. For example, uh, all the command we are doing here today, actually is, if you go, to, go back to this guy, uh, no, the the cloud IDE. Uh, some part there it will tell you it's a Ubuntu console here. Uh, some part in, in this in this guy, it will tell you it's a Ubuntu and uh, the terminal we are using here actually is a bash. Anyone knows what's a shell? Other than the petroleum company. Okay, so it is. It's just uh, if you use Windows, then you probably have this CMD thing. And if you're using a Mac, then you have this terminal. And the shell is the interface, the command line interface between a human and the computer. And uh, for shell, there is a lot of version. And the batch is one of it. 
and uh, in Bash Shell, here, here is your entry point. If you are interested, you can just Google Bash Shell. And they will have a lot of tutorials, a lot of information on it. And uh, most, of the, the, most of the time, actually, even I don't care about that. I only care about something like, what does this particular command do? Uh, for example, let me think. Uh, for example, just now someone, most of you did a uh, git checkout, right? So you're probably wondering what else does this command can do? So one thing you can do is go to Google and uh, just search Git man page. So man page is the term we search commands information in Linux. Actually, you can do a man git in the in the terminal itself. Let me show you my uh, Mac terminal. Okay, so it's loading. Okay, it's done. And let's do man git. So this is a manual page for git command. So during the development of uh, Rails, you probably see a lot of different commands. So this is one thing you can do uh, in the terminal. You can even do it in the Cloud9, the terminal there. But I just show it in my computer. And if this, this thing is not really user friendly, uh, you need know some command for them. I want to search uh, tag. Yeah, you, you need to know certain command because it's not a graphic user interface. So one way you can do it is just search it in Google and it will, it will point you to a web page and it's easier to look through. Okay, so just in case something happens you are not sure and some command is there. If you go to tutorials in like there is a website called Reels Girl, I think. And uh, there is a Reels cast. That wonderful source, but they don't really explain every single command. So if you are not sure what this command do, do a Google search. And uh, know what you are searching for. Okay, so everyone gets the error page yet? The error you are seeing just now, actually, it's a corner case. It won't happen to, like, all the time. You need to have a specific condition to let it happen. Um, I, I went through the code you guys wrote so far, and uh, that is something we call happy pass. We do it that way, we assume nothing will went wrong in the code. But that is a thing where really happens in in real life. So now this is your first error, first bug in the application. So I want everyone to try to reproduce the error and share with me why this error happened and why it's only happened in that case. Don't get to the error maybe. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just running it and yes. I'm trying to get the login information. Yes, okay, got it. Good. So people got the errors? Try it. Uh, go to the events. It's under the events, real events, under your update uh, attendance. It's there. Uh, save file. Yes. Because I just need it. I still don't have a error. I'm using it. I'm just using it. Try some action. Try something. I said, try something. Just don't look at that. What you are looking at is the happy pass. We are trying to create an unhappy one. So. Okay, the point of this exercise is uh, 
you need to know your program and you need to try to understand how the user will use your program. And uh, then you can prevent him bad things from happening, right? Uh, in software company, uh, if five years ago, there actually a dedicated role called QA engineer, uh, quality uh, assurance engineer. What they do is, you give them a piece of code, they will just try to break it. But now, with Agile, if you heard of that, so basically it's a new practice in the engineering field. Uh, the developer himself is responsible to cover all the cases and uh, try to make program sort of perfect. So this is a very important skill. Discover the corner case and uh, try to handle the corner case. Do we have a get over here? For those already get the error, maybe can try to figure out. Just try to uh, think of a reason why it happened. Project, we have a lot of flaws, right? You guys so know specific one that you have to do. That's why I call it corner case, right? <laughs> Actually, it's not a corner case at all. Oh, you're not working. Great. No, I guess. <laughs> it still looks weird. I think it's. Do you see the UI? No, I, I think we missed some, some, something. Uh, Your head is actually. Yeah, so you probably missed one of the parts. It's okay, okay. Let's, let's just show you guys. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Oh, okay. Oh. I don't Does it have an error? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
So why, why it's not working in this case? Will you, anyone can just summarize what, I mean, actually it's when this error will happen. Yes. So uh, this is something we call, actually, actually we don't have a name for it. Yeah, so basically what happens here is the backend is assuming you always have something. But the reality is, you can't uncheck the whole thing. So this is a part of the error. Okay, so let's let's get fixing. Question: uh, Is anyone does know what this means? Think, think it's like English. What, what does this word mean in English? And that class is not existing. Uh, partially right. This guy is a class. So in Ruby, everything is an object. And if it's an object, it comes from class. And uh, this new is your object. And uh, this new class is the class it's from. And this is a special uh, value in Ruby. It indicates, just like English, there's nothing behind it. So, anyone take a guess, what does this mean, this sentence mean? So, you know what a method is? So, what's your method called? What, sorry? So, like, how would I, I mean, I don't know what's going on, so, but... I'll Take just, a guess. Okay, so my guess, here we go, is that there's something wrong with the method. This, this, it, it falls under the method folder, and under the events controller, and there's one class, or one section where it refers to the attendance, it didn't put in the class saying that if it's empty, you should do what? Close, close. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I read from there. Yes, yes. So where's the keyword? The keyword actually is under, uh, actually the whole sentence is the keyword. Okay. <laughs> and uh, the, the thing is, you probably, if you search it, you probably won't find anything. Yeah. It's because this method, so here is just undef un undefined method. This is an error, okay. the type of error. And this method actually is something you are using. So it's very specific to your application. And uh, this guy is standard, so actually you can have an un undefined method, something else for this class. Next step is the key. See the highlight right line. It's indicate where this error come from. So anyone tell me what does this line do? I hope the tutor in the last class okay. shares it with so us. First of all, the hash key, what does it mean? Because I've not seen that part before. Okay, so that's the first error you made here is hash key. You shouldn't read that way. Okay. So uh, if you do a Google hash key, you're probably going to have a lot of uh, questions. Uh, I mean, stuff. Okay. Actually, it's a very specific computer science term. Okay. But it has nothing to do here. The question actually is here. You see the dot here? Actually, it indicates this key is from the guy in front of it. So this is what we call uh, OOP, object-oriented object programming. So your object actually is in front of it. So can you try to read this again? So the key inside this box, I call it box of attended hash, 
is not. Well, actually, has a tender equals to a tender hash key and tender ID. I don't understand that part. I, I just focus on the attendant hash dot key question mark there. Mm -hmm. How do you interpret this 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 sentence here? Means that those who have attended it can be found in the attended hash and there's a key that is attached to the ID you of this. Doing too much of the interpretation. Okay. I don't know, like so, that's what okay. you're asking me to do, right? <laughs> uh, attendant hash itself is object. Okay. And uh, go back to the method, it says this key is, is a method, okay. it's not found. And actually, the method name is key question mark. All right. So, key and key question mark are two different things here. Yes. So, here actually, is, this is the object. Uh -huh. And uh, you are trying to get this method in this object. And you pass some parameter into here. So, let's ignore this one first. Actually, it's not important in this case. So what happens here is undefined method key question mark for this class. And what happens here is this guy is a, is a what? It's not existing. Yes. So the, the attended hash is not existing. Yes. So you actually find the root cause here. I didn't really get that, but yeah, well, this is something for the face value. Okay, so uh, you, you probably probably going to see this error a lot. Some method not defined for this new class, uh, new object, and from this class. And uh, so first, you need to identify the method here. It's here. You are using this one, and uh, which means basically what you are doing here. In this case, uh, you are doing. Let me see. Attendant, uh, what the what's the name? Attendant hash equals two. Now and you do a uh, attendant hash dot key question mark and some parameters. So you are actually doing this, and uh, then again, which means you are. Eventually, it's doing is just do this. Now you understand what's going on behind the thing, yes, right? Yes, I understand that part, but what is the point? No, no that's the point. That's the error here. It shouldn't be this guy. Uh -huh. Because you are trying to do something with this guy. And so basically, it means uh, what am I trying to say? It should be an uh, object with the value you want. Um, okay. Continue. You should. The organizer. You should organize a Ruby course. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, if, if you. Uh, anyone finishes the book, I send in the first class. The introduction to Ruby programming, something like that. Learn, learn, learning programming actually. So there's the whole chapter on this. I mean, I, I understand the logic behind it because it's, you're, you're basically trying to assign a certain value to this object. Yeah. And then it turns out that it's not a certain value, it's an object. Yeah. And then it turns out that it's not a certain value, it's an object. And then it turns out that it's not a certain value, it's an object. And then it turns out that it's not a certain value, it's an object. Mm -hmm. I understand this part because mm -hmm. the language. I know you don't it. understand um, why you create that. I mean, why you created that error and what's the point of actually reading that title, the error title, and trying to figure out where it went wrong. That's that's the part I'm not getting the link. I'm confused. <laughs> oh, what? what sorry, okay. I mean, it's not the language part, the language logic that's not making sense to me right now. It's more the where's the error coming from and how do you pinpoint that, oh, this is where you have to look for. I thought that's the pin whole point of debugging, yes. like trying to identify yes. Yes. The, what's, the, what's wrong with it, right? Yes. So. Yes, I'm yeah. going to get there. Oh, okay. So basically, you find out it's this guy, right? The error is here. You know what I mean, right? <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> so I'm just like confused to, because it's not very clearly defined to me that where you're trying to get to, like what's the point, what's the point of this? <laughs> the point of this, we, we, so basically we need to make sure when this function is called, uh -huh. this guy, it shouldn't be a nil, right? Okay. That's the point. Okay. So that's why I'm, I'm explaining why this error is con why this error com it why this yeah this error happened and uh, mm -hmm. and how to prevent that from happening in the future and uh, in that way so basically from here and uh, if you're doing a lot of programming you will see this guy oh something is missing it shouldn't be new and uh, then you need to identify who is new so then here it is. Then we need to make sure it's not ah, new. Okay. Now you get it, right? I get your point. Okay. It's just that you, you went around to another side trying to explain the language and kind of yeah. what's going on now. Okay, sorry. No <laughs> worries. Okay, so after this, let's before fix it. Just take a guess why it's happening. So now I'm telling you this guy shouldn't be new. And uh, now it is. And why is that case? Correct, correct. So if you want to go deeper there, you need to check the logic in the submit attendance and something like that, and how this work all together. Mm -hmm. And you need to identify where this uh, this object is initialized to that value. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to do that. It will go into very deep. Okay. So I am just will do a quick fix on this issue here. Uh, okay, another thing. So anyone tell me where, where this file is? Everyone see this error, right? You should see the file. Where's the file? And you change the file, right? So, where is it? So it's events control line 29. Okay, so yeah, that's correct. Let's go to there. Uh, okay. Events controller. Okay. Line twenty. Twenty nine here. So. Okay, never mind. So, like, if okay, so, from the, the error page, what, and we found the line of code that is highlighted uh, red, so what should be first first step that you should do to check what's wrong? Because, like, to I guess to, to me, personally, I don't know what, like, okay, fine, and now the class is wrong, so what would be the first step to check? Like, to, to I mean, check? We, we checked this one already, right? So we found the root cause. The root cause is... This, is this guy, it shouldn't be now, but it's yes. now, and it's calling this one. So what we need to do is we just make sure when it calls this guy, it's not now. Okay. It actually is new. Yeah. Now it's uh, another language. So if someone going to do uh, Java in the future, you will see this guy. Then there is an error, the uh, norm pointer or something. Uh, something like that, non-pointer error. It's similar to this guy. So, uh, it's it's just a quick fix. It doesn't guarantee the whole thing is 100% accurate, but I just want to show you it's a common practice. Before you're trying to do this thing, and you can't be sure it has a value, so you do if, uh, uh, attendant hash. So let's see. Ah, come on. So well, here is uh, you are safe, safeguard the so this statement, and we're going to put this statement in between. So here you are safeguard this statement. So basically. 
This means if it's not now, it will do this. So if an object is a now, if you put it in, inside the if statement, it will consider as a false. And if it's not a now, then it's a true. Yeah, this one I understand. Okay, this one you understand, okay? Right. So, but you're taking up. You're basically putting it into a condition for the... Yes. Okay. Yes. And uh, I assume here, I assume this value will take uh, true or false. How, how do I get this? I didn't read the code at all. I just see this function. I just think it might take a Boolean time. It's a true value or false value. Mm -hmm. Why come to this conclusion? So actually, it's here. It, it has this consistency, so I just assume. Hello. Are you here, the Ruby on Rails? Hot. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> okay. So, because I don't want to introduce any sad uh, effect. So what happens is, if you have a unassigned variable in your code, it might create chaos somewhere. So people don't know what the actual value it is, and uh, in some parts, it might introduce a bug because this uh, variable can be reassigned to an another value, and people assume it's a different value. So in that case, uh, I will do a else. Is that else? E L. Uh, else. I will assign to a false. The reason being is, get back to the UI, we know when it's not checked, it will have this issue. So, which means this has a attempt should be a false. That's another reason when you do programming, uh, the variable name is really important. So for example, if the previous developer just changed the head attendant to A, B, C, D, I have no idea what's going on. Then I need to go back to the code and read through every single piece of code there and to try to understand what this A, B, C, D is. But in this case, we can just assume it will do what it's supposed to do. So. so in that case, we can give this guy a try. Uh, let's 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 hope it works. Ah, it works. Finally. So this is a part of the debug techniques. And uh, now you also know why you need a very meaningful variable name, because you're probably going to work with other people. And then you want to make sure everyone understands what's going on. This part it take a lot longer than this. Okay. okay. So everyone gets this part working. Okay. Now we fix this bug. Let's continue with the next thing. So if you, in this page, you can see there is an admin session and there is an attendance session, right? And if you go to the model class, where's our model? If you go to our model class, you can see it actually has another session called coach. It's never shown in the UI. That is not all. If you click on edit, no attendance, no those stuff, right? So what we are going to do is we're going to add those stuff there. Okay? okay. Actually, I don't know what's next. Let, let me take a look at my cheat sheet. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's leave there. Okay. My cheat sheet. Next. Ah, okay. Oops. Okay. 
Okay, if you have downloaded the Google Docs, uh, open this guy. We will, I will try to explain this guy. Uh, it's CS uh, underscore zero zero one dot RB. So it's a Ruby file, and this is a file location we're going to modify. And I'm going to explain what's going on here. If we take a look at our model class, you can see the attendance actually is, uh, I would say it's a many-to-many -many relationship. So why is a many-to-many -many relationship? From the code. I'm not asking you the logic behind that. Just from the code, how I can tell it's a many-to-many -many relationship. <laughs> <laughs> then it can be a one to many relationship. Yeah. No, I mean so has many means each event has many attendance, right? And uh, many to many means many events can have uh, many yes. So how can I tell it's a many to many relationship? It's not a one to many relationship. Yes, that's the key part. This is how you identify the many to many relationship. Okay, let's make the whole thing very tricky. Okay. Why is that tricky? It's I Okay. Uh the way I'm going to show you is not normally I will do. They call it like more pure uh, Ruby on Rails way. And uh, normally for for a web project like this, first, uh, here, the wheel, I, I won't have all this stuff, ERB files. You understand how this ERB files works, right? When you create a request to the server, the soul will interpret your request and uh, render the UI based on the ERB files mm -hmm. and uh, try to put everything into the layout for you. Yes. Okay? Normally, I won't do that. So read me at first. Now, it's like almost every single website there is a app version. In my first session, I share with like web application and uh, application, mm -hmm. the British relationship between this. And uh, this guy is rendering a uh, HTML on the for, for the request for the client. How do you do that with a uh, app? I mean you can open it with uh, your browser in, in your phone but people want an app right? And what app will provide more performance better performance. So in this case uh, normally, notice the backend, I won't have the EDR file. So my server won't render the HTML. Instead, it will do uh, something for device to consume instead of a, a browser. Mm -hmm. So normally, it's, you probably heard of a, a full API, a REST API. And uh, there are other stuff like uh, SOUP API, is that? No, SOUP API. So there, there is uh, some standard we can use to do that. The way we do that is instead of a render HTML file, we render something like a XML file, something like a JSON file. If, if you are not sure what a JSON file looks like, so it's, it's, it's definitely something not a human can read, but it's something a device, a computer program can easily consume. So this is what I normally to do with my backend server. And uh, but people still want to use it through a browser, right? How do I do that? I will make use some framework to consume that. 
So that's why I say the stuff I'm going to show you is not normally I do things like this. And the reason it's trickier is one thing people is expecting is, for example, you want to add an attendance. You can't just open a page, a form for every single people you want to add, right? Normally, people will do is you have a button there, you click on it, it show up a new form in the same page. Then you fill up, and if you want more people to use it, then you click on it again. Right? This is something people will expect. And uh, it's very hard to achieve purely with static uh, HTML and the Java, without JavaScript itself. So that's why I said maintenance naming is very tricky. So that's why actually uh, next part we will assume we will fix number of coach and fix number of attendees. We are not trying to add any number we want. So we will use a fixed number. Uh, before that, uh, let's let's go to this guy. So the next step is we need to add this one to our events model. What you can do is if you enjoy typing you can just type it. If not you can just copy over to this guy. Uh, anywhere, I mean, as long as it's not in the DF, the define, the define method class, uh, I mean, the, the block is okay, you can put it here, you can put it anywhere. So, in my case, I love my association to be together, so I put it here. Because uh, this is for the attendance, so I just put it here. Now I'm going to explain to you what's going on here. So basically, what that way it does here is it will let uh, Rails know this form is not just for the events. It will also take additional attributes for the attendance. So if you go back to the UI page we have for create events now, you will see it only have the fields for events. The reason being is Real assume you just want to do that, and uh, for reals to take additional attributes, you need to provide this one. So you can see it's called uh, nested attributes for for this guy. Then I will talk about this part later. So understand the first part. Okay, the second part. If you see this one, that's the language part. Uh -oh. Okay. Uh, this guy and uh, some. We also can have this one and the B. Uh, this is what we call a uh, hash. It's basic, basically it's a key value pair. I mean, not really. That's, actually, it's not a pair. You can have as many as you want in in it. And these two are the same. So if you have a equal error, or you can have something like this, it's the same. It's just a two different way to write it. So, and uh, you probably seen something like this a lot in the code for now. You should be, uh, for example, here. You are pointing this value to here. And uh, here again, right? It's a key value. And uh, this one is a string, and uh, this one with a Come up behind or come up in front is something we call label. It doesn't matter. It's a similar thing. And uh, here, what happens is uh, in Ruby, actually, it's not real. Actually, I'm not sure. Okay, anyway, uh, you give a parameter, and the last parameter, it can be a hash. When it's a hash, you don't need to give the bracket. Here, 
here actually is equivalent to oh damn it the clip bracket here so uh, one thing you might see is you're going to see a lot of function calls and at the end of it you have a lot of this this error thing or the This thing, this hash thing. So the last attribute for a function call it can be a hash, and uh, and in that case, you don't need to provide the uh, click uh, bracket. And what happens here is uh, when we submit click the form and we submit the attributes, it's possible you submit an empty form. And uh, it's perf perfectly fine because in our cases we actually want to create the events, so we allow the sub attributes, the, the nested attributes are empty. In that case, we can reject if it's empty. Otherwise, uh, if you go to our accept, uh, attendance model, you will see other validations, and it will give you an error. And uh, it, it won't be removed because we, it's the whole thing hard code for now. So we do this reject. And this reject, if it will take a function, actually. And uh, we call this one, it's called anonymous function. It's a lambda statement, which can pass in. You guys the idea. So what happens here is uh, when you submit the value, it will pass the value into this lambda statement and uh, it will evaluate this guy. And uh, so basically we are check whether the user ID is, is blank, is empty, is an empty string. So in that case, if it's empty string, then we just ignore this particular value A. Anyone? It's not lost. Uh, actually, you can leave. Just leave the, this reject if if you want. Then we will go to the happy pass. So the most important part is the first first part. Yes, yes. So now, if you do a refresh on, no, let's try to create a new one. New. No errors, but uh, still we don't have the attributes. Anyone tell me why? Why we don't have the attributes in the form? We already told the model we want the attribute for this subclass. Okay, so which one? Which file is that? Uh, the file view is the folder, right? Yeah. Which file you want me to edit? It's still a folder, right? <laughs> Which oh. file? I want this the file name. New HTML. Good guys. Good guys. Okay. No, I, I was looking at the new, right? So let's see what's going on here. What's this? It's pretty empty. Why is empty? Actually, actually, it's a good point. You said it's a new, right? Yeah. Because we are doing a new, new, new object for this form. So you can see here, it's calling another function render. So it's render a partial here. So which file is this partial? Oh. Yes. So uh, in Rails, if you have a real star with underscore, then we call it a partial because it's partial file. It's not a complete file. So we need to modify this guy. We now we can take a look at. Come on, actually I have all, everything typed out already. This this, if you open your CS002, then we can see we need to mo modify this file, and this is the part we want to add. So you can 
copy paste to it or you can type it out. Or anyone here is familiar with HTML. So everyone else doesn't know what's a HTML at all. A little, okay. So uh, but basically HTML in in web browser is just contribute to the UI to the structure. And uh, logical wise it's not that important. And uh, I just explain a bit. The div is will create a block, a invisible block in the in the UI. And the h tree actually is the header. Then h one is the biggest. Then you have h two smaller. Then h three is even smaller. The what? Probably not. I mean. People normally just stay with H3. I think when you go to H4, it will be similar with uh, the normal size. Oh, so the purpose stands for the size of the font? Yes, it's a convention. Yeah. But size is, is not the story. Let's go through this code first. Then you will see this percentage sign equal. What's this? What does this mean? You also see this. I'm just helping you to recap what you learned already. Yes, yes. Correct. So after this is a Ruby command, and uh, we call it embedded Ruby. So it's so it's why it's called ERB. And uh, then again, I mentioned you need to copy this one to this file. So where does F come from? I'm very curious. Anyone can tell me where this F come from? No. No, I mean, has everyone copied this one to this file already? So where, where should you guys put? Give me the line number. Where are you going to put the whole thing here? Where you can't put the whole thing here, and where you can. Let me see. Is there some place I can't put the phone? Okay. Okay, this I, uh, the letter F here, this F actually is come from here. So actually it's your, what's, I think it's called form builder helper class. So you will do uh, F the label, F the text field and uh, f dot date sele select right so this this was the f class com uh, the the object come from so here we continue use that this one i think is a new one for you it's a fields for and this one needs to be linked back to our accept uh, nested attribute for so this guy will create the attribute for your association. In our case here is attendance. And uh, if you notice it will take another form builder. And in our case here, I change it because I, I don't want to create confusion. And it probably won't work if I don't change it. So now I call it uh, AF, stands for attendance uh, form builder. So inside here, this part until this end actually is what you're going to see for the form for your attendance. And let's just go through it one by one. First, select type. In our case, we only take two values, I me and student, right? So if dot select, it will give you a drop box and uh, the user type is the attribute you try to create a form for. And this is a value, potential value you're going to provide. And the next one has a 10. I create a hidden file there. I just assume when you create the, the form, everyone there is not a 10 the cost yet. 
So that's why I create a hidden file, and uh, I set a def default value of false. So when it's submitted, it will create as a false value. Uh, you can try without this, this line. And uh, when you try to create the object, you're probably going to see an error because if I remember correctly, in the validation for that value, for, for attendant value, we only take true or false. It doesn't take an empty value. So that's why I have to, at first I didn't have this one and they give me an error, so that's what I did here. And the next part is your actual field for the attend uh, attendees. So the first one is the name. I say name, never mind, it doesn't matter. Okay, this, this part is more important uh, because we actually get the attendees from the database, from the user. If you check our uh, model class, you will see the attendees actually referring to the user class. So that's why here I actually get the value from from the thing from that. So it will user dot all dot collect, and this part again actually is your lambda expression. So what, what happens here is it will return this array to this function. And then here is this part, the this string, a dot name plus a dot email. So you will have an email space, or name space email there. It will show in to the user as the drop down text here. And this a dot ID, pay attention to the to the comma here. So actually it's an additional attribute. It's a it's an array. It's a array. Or array of strings. So this guy will be your actual value submitted to the server. Uh, you will see it in a moment how this be done. But for now you just assume it will work. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the last part, the last part actually has nothing to do with uh, create a new attendees, but actually it has more to do with your updates, your events. So if you go to your edit uh, ERB file, you will see it's actually render the form too, the partial form. Let me show you. See, it's render this form too. So in case we want to remove someone to from the attendance list, we will need that. But so I just put there. It should it should be okay. I mean it shouldn't create an issue if you remove it for now, but let's have it. Okay, so everyone understand this part? Questions? Anything unclear? I will just do a copy paste. So this is my form. I will put it after my date and before the summit, right? Create it. Now give a refresh. Ooh, it's still not showing. That's weird. Can I save it? Ah, yeah. Why is it still not showing? I have the wheel, why it's not? Everyone try. If you show it, let me know. It shouldn't show. Why? The wheel? It's rendering from the form, right? If you go to your code. The new, 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 new wheel, right? Where's the new guy? Yeah. Here, right? It's rendering the form. Why is it not showing? OK. 
okay. Guess everyone have no idea. Uh, so let's go to our controller. Let's take a look why the events is showing, but not this guy. Events. Uh, controller, where's my this one? Okay, here. Which function should I look at? It's the uh, new. Okay, this is the pass. The pass is events slash new. So, which function should I look at in the controller? Do you remember how the pass is generated? How does it work with the routes? So basically, normally for every uh, resource, the path should be a part of the function name. So it's new, so we look at the new function, right? Then there's a new function. Where's the new function here? Ah, it's here. Look at this guy. What do you see? One thing you can try is uh, let's let's command this guy out and uh, refresh this again. I think this give an error. Why why is it doing that? Why is this guy is so important? And this will also answer the question why we can't see the, 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 the form we just copied over. Okay, so here is what happens. We will create a new form. First, you need to have an empty object. And then your form builder can base on the empty object to create those fields for you. And in our case, here we only have the event, the empty object for the events. So which means we actually don't have the empty object for our attendees. So here is the tricky part. That's why for now we only can make a fixed number of attendees there. Because we need to create the empty ob object for them. So it can be rendered properly on the UI part. Okay, so let's create the empty object. Uh, actually, actually, this is the tree here. If you just go down there for the files, you know what I'm going to do next. So this this code, which file should goes? Take a look and guess what does it do? Or what this thing do, does? Okay, uh, so basically, this uh, model the association the build function. What it does is, we know what's events, right? It's the empty object over there, and uh, you do the model the association the build. It will create a new empty object for this association, and. Uh, insert it to the association array without saving. So basically it's creating a new empty object for attendees. So later you are going to see for, for coach, for the empty coach object, what does this guy will be look like? So it will be events, event dot coaches, which is the association, the build. Okay, so this is the important function. And uh, three times, basically, it will do the stuff in it three times. Let's copy this guy over. Uh, la, 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 la. So where should I put it? My question is, can I put it here? Don't mind the format. Can I put it here?
do you remember the error we get in the first? If you put it here, you will get a similar error there because your events is not initialized yet. And this function will help you to initialize this object. That's why you can't put it there. It should be after it. So remember, in Rails, if you want your form to be generated properly, you need to have an empty object in your new function. Otherwise, your form will not work. And uh, my question is, do we need that for the edit part? Think about that. We'll come back later. Actually, maybe not. So now let's let's do a refresh in the, in the form. Okay. Come on. Ah, see? Because we said we want three attendees, so there will be three attendees. Everyone got this page. take me to figure out the stuff I'm going to show you today. Not really, not really. <laughs> so, uh, Amber told me I need to do this Friday. And uh, I pretty much didn't sleep that much during the weekend because preparing this one. Uh, first, it's not the normal thing I do for backend. So I also need to learn a lot of stuff. And the second one is there's, a, as, as I said, they're much trickier than what you did before. So it took me probably about 10 hours. So what do you usually do? Yeah, that I, won't, I won't create form from this backend already. So 
let's do that after this course. Actually, in my GitHub, I provide a list of stuff you probably want to pick up if you want to become more serious about programming. Yeah, and uh, so this is not what I do normally, but the tricky part is uh, someone might see some syntax error. It's probably, uh, I'm talking about and here. So it's be probably because you miss something when you copy the code over. Especially the little things uh, here. The, the end statement for your embedded Ruby. The reason you might miss it is because this, this line is also a part of the end of line in the original song. You probably just overwrite it. So if you have a syntax error, just add it back. So everyone can see this one? And I'm basically lost from the point where you started introducing the Chinese, <laughs> which is very bad. I know. <laughs> you started teaching English uh, back to your code. Okay, you for, first, first. Okay, let, let's. Yeah, I understand this part, and like you tried that. To no, no, I just explain that, but the, yes. you just need to copy it over. But where is it? Yes, I don't. Again, I. Uh, okay, so uh, here is the commentary here. As the comments here is the for you need to edit. For, yes. So, but it shouldn't be uh, override. You need to add this one into the form. And that is part of where you need to think where is the part of the form you want to add. And that's why I explained to you where this F come from. It's not bad. This, this form builder come from. I, I probably just show you the the file I have. It will be easier with my phone. Okay. So this one you everyone should see this one, right? This one from your previous project. The the daytime select. So it's the Dropbox for the daytime. And uh, what you need to do is add this this new form stuff. Enter it. Oh, but wait, it doesn't really matter, but you need to pay attention to the structure of this guy. So you just copy the code I have and then into here. It should work. Let me see. Uh, yeah. And uh, in between this guy and the, the submit. So you should have a, a F star fills four until this end. Something is like uh, actually I noticed this one. 
都会遇到的，那所以整到类似。Uh, if you have this error, and then I un undefined method a uh, plus sign yeah. for the new yeah. If you get that error, just reset a little bit. Yeah. The the reason being is actually uh I noticed uh in your previous session uh when you guys do the device the plug in for login you actually do the something you shouldn't you drop the user database and you didn't. Uh, introduce the name column back into the database. So the reason being uh, it's working when you still work last time uh, is because uh, during the migration it won't actually trying to really drop anything. It will just try to rearrange that in a smart way if you fit. And sometimes you left uh, something shouldn't be there. So uh, when you're doing per program with database, try not to drop the table. If you do drop, make sure you add back all your, all your column there, as long as you are using it. So I think for people is starting with a new project, you should be fine. And uh, it will happen for people who actually reuse their column from previous session. Okay. Yeah, just reset the database. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> just reset the database. So, uh, a yeah, break is a DB. Go to GitHub if you have a just where's my GitHub? Uh, GitHub, GitHub. Okay, uh, you guys know how to do migration, right? For those can get an error with the name stuff, the username, uh, create a migration. So the migration should be called something like uh, add name to user, something like that. Then you should use your add column function to add user to it, then do a db migrate. But it won't save your data, so you probably want to do a DB reset.
has the name of the user. User's.
Yeah, real is using something called convention over configuration. So uh, basically, it means the full name in the function name, class name, everything. It need to be consistent. It need to be uh, a match. Otherwise, there will be some issues there. Yeah. So I hope everyone is seeing that page already. Anyway, so uh, for those people already have the, the page up, uh, you can try to fill up the page and uh, click submit and see what's going on. It not work. It's not working actually. You need to do some more debugging. But the reason I'm showing you all this bug here is it's a common thing. It's even very experienced. Uh, Programmer might have seen that. You might just forget about that during the development. So let's try it and uh, try to look at the log and tell me what's going on, why it's not working. How is on my Thank you. 
I haven't got this page yet. Let me see. Who else haven't got the page yet? The thing is that I missed the fourth part, and after that I missed the three part. <laughs> so I'm like lost with certain segments. That's not working for me. Okay. Well, I'll come back later. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little bit behind. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I also don't know how to help you. I guess what I said is not my fault idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 
我重新注册一个，我在市里面。你也可以看，你需要。可以看所以它这边是安吉曼的库尔博和，所以是这个东西它找不到。你要回过看，你的是。这么厚。然后，所以它是哪一行？这很奇怪，很奇怪可以手动去改那个框
说 terminal 有问题，呃，开一次 terminal 就好了。哦，我问了一个。也我帮你做Page. Who haven't got the page yet? Uh, let's just continue. So everyone tried to submit the page and uh, tell me what's what's wrong with it. Yes, you don't see an error, but something is wrong. So basically, you can't actually add the attendees there, right? So the next step is going to your log. I will just ah, yeah. Where's the log? Anyone tell me where's the log? Come on. The the console log, in here. This is your log. Um, what, what's the question, I guess? Okay, so this is a page, right? If you fill in up and uh, try to create a student and create the events, and you will see the attendee is still empty. Okay. Yes. So, no. Yeah. So we need to figure out what's going on. Okay. So again, go back to the log. Uh, basically, when you click on the create, it's doing a post, HTTP post to the server. I heard you guys learned about that last time. Okay. <laughs> so, do you know what's a HTTP post? No. Okay. Uh, basically, let me. Uh, any link you. A link, an actual link, when you click on it, actually it's doing your HTTP GET. Oh, okay. 
that yeah. <laughs> so uh, when you cre click on the create, actually it's not a link. It's a function, it's a Sami function called by the, the jQuery actually. So it's doing a HTTP post. So that's your hint. So that's why you need to know what's going on. And uh, then you're just looking for the HTTP post yeah, here. So actually this is your HTTP post. Ah, uh, come on. Before the gap. Ah. So what happens is uh, you post the data to this URL. And here is the data you post. And uh, you take a closer look, you can see the H the SQL statement there. Uh, there is a user. We got the user. So I assume this part actually is uh, that part is your your device is verify your identity. I'm not sure. I'm just guessing, but it's not important because it's a select. It's not creating anything. Uh, here, at this point, I'm more interested in the insert. So basically, what you are seeing is uh, the events is created is inserted into the database, but we don't have the attendance there, which means something went wrong here. As you can see, we only have insert into events, but we don't have insert into the attendance. So, and uh, here is something you should pay attention to. It's said unpermitted parameters. Basically means it's not allowed. So something, some data may you try to post was lost in the process. And uh, that something is your attendance attribute. And if you go back a bit, see the log here, this is your parameters list. Uh, is this first time you've seen this? Okay, I saw this. Okay, so basically, what happens here is, uh, let, let me do the thing. This is the form. Let's go to the form again. Let's see the new form, right? And uh, if you inspect the form, you will see. I hope everyone is using Chrome or Firefox. No one using Internet Explorer, right? <laughs> Why are you despising it? No, it's just harder for the developer to work with. So if you open that, you will see this name and the ID stuff like that. So the name actually uh, that, that's come to HTTP request. When you do a post, actually you collect all the form information and uh, post it into the server. And uh, you can see this events events or attendance attributes. So this is the parameter, the attribute is not allowed in our server. So now you know where it's come from, right? So take a look at this, remember this name, and uh, go back to our server log. Uh, no. Here's my log. Server log, this part you will see there is an event, and uh, then you have an equal error sign, which is uh, your hash, or dictionary, or whatever I mentioned earlier. It's pointing to another object, actually a hash. And within it, there is a tendency, uh, tendency attribute. And uh, in that is the, the data you actually submit for this particular form. So try to map this information to to the actual form here. Ah. Uh, the actual form here. So for example, the attendees, what does it look like? Uh, the user type, it will be events, attendance attribute. Zero means the first form. And uh, the attribute is the user type. 
and this information will be linked back to your parameters list consumed by the server. I see people lost. Uh, yeah, so you need to understand this, then you know why actually the error is happening. It's because this uh, Rails is using a whitelist. So any attribute come from the browser to the server, if the attribute is not a whitelist, it won't be served into the database. That's why you get this, this thing. So all we need to do is just add this thing, add this attribute to the list. And uh, do you guys know where it is? You should know, I saw a code. You have plenty of that. Okay, now. Right. <laughs> uh, controller, where's my controller? It's always the controller. Okay. At the bottom, you have this guy, right? What is this function called? So you just need to add the attribute list to here. And uh, the reason I'm showing this one, you actually not just need to add a single this attribute. You actually also need to the, uh, add the sub attribute within this attribute, which means you need to add user type, uh, has attended, and the user ID, and uh, destroy. So, how do we do that? You actually can go to uh, not this guy. Yeah. So no. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I want to show you. You didn't actually create the thing. And go to this. So yeah. Here is here is it. Here is it. It's uh, the permit list for your attributes. So you just copy the whole thing, overwrite whatever is there. And you can see I'm not just adding adding this attendance attribute. I'm also adding all the, the attributes in the attendance, which including, why well, I add the ID here? Never mind, I add the ID here. Uh, more importantly, you need user type destroy and has attend and user ID. User ID. Yeah, user ID. So let's just copy the whole thing. So it should be something like this. Uh, you might wondering why why the attendance is not a creator, but it's not an error. Actually, it's more like a security feature, so it shouldn't read the error there. Uh, it's because I actually can modify the form and uh, submit something the user shouldn't do. For example, the user type, if you notice, uh, it, it's a value, it's a sign. Okay, that's just a note. In our case, it's not a valid case. But for example, if you are students, you don't have the admin right, and your user type is student. But I know this API exists, and this API is not protected by any, uh, any, any uh, access control. Then what I can do is I can actually modify my own type and submit to, to the API, and I will become a admin. And so this is just a extra security feature there to prevent unwanted data going to the database. So if you've done this one, then you can just create the thing that you have. Uh, what I call? You will just have this and work. Let me just actually I don't need refresh this way, but just give a refresh and uh, call it test two and uh, just create something Apple and uh, yeah, and this guy will be a student. 
Hopefully it works. That's it. Now you see it's working. Right. So everyone back in this park. She wants to run the server. Oh, the server. Oh, oh the let me check. Oh, uh, where's this guy? This guy. Oh, this command. Uh, <laughs> okay. No, so something went wrong. I, I don't know. The <laughs> cloud nine is uh, acting weird today. Okay. Okay. Anyone knows what what does that that dog sounds mean? Mm. It's a environmental variable in the Linux. Uh, so I can do everything with this. I just use my own. Uh, okay. Uh, and no, not here. I can do uh, 1 equals to uh, 8 plus 1 and uh, echo dollar sign. Yeah, so it will give me. So it's the variable name. It's a variable name in bash. So. You can ignore that. I don't Oh, I don't know. 
Isn't it IT, right?
I'm going to change is the show because we currently actually don't have a way to check but the, the yes. code yeah there is a code transfer so maybe this has to come right from the time under the attendance do we like create another one for like I'm 
this kind of tree here. So which means this part is correct. And forward in the form itself, I actually open the side inside. This also is true. Something lost in the form, mm -hmm. so that's why I print in the form with the, the count of the object. It also is true, but then it must be something else. Okay. Then the last, so you check the wheel, you check the controller. The only thing you didn't check is the model. So let's go back to the model. So that's how it works. Oh. Yeah. So that's why it's important to understand the whole flow. Okay. If something went wrong, it's not really the chance. Basically, there's working something in all three parts. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So it's not really the same. Now, anyone here know PHP? So, yeah. So basically, if you do PHP like long time ago, like maybe 10 years ago, uh, it much easier. You don't need to modify multiple files just to get one page up. But the reason we do that this way now is a better pra practice. So if something went wrong, I can identify the, the where it's going wrong. And uh, if I want to write automated tests, I can just write the test against that particular part of the code. Yeah. So uh, let's get back to our <laughs> oh, uh, so the coach. Uh, first, you need to update your. Actually, you don't need to reject it. Who else? Okay. Uh, coach. Uh, for the coach part, first you need to add add the coach the particular coach part to the wheel pages show dot html erd. Everyone done that. It should be very similar to your attendance. Um, yeah, it's okay. So you can just copy the code in your attendance and modify that. But you need to be careful about the attribute there because the attribute is are different. I think yours is okay. I think you modify that. I 
Oh, you don't need. Oh, this part. Yeah, that part is. So just save it now. That's it. Now I'm going to refresh the page. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Reject C for reject E. Reject. Yeah. Some error is just due to your typo, so just be patient and don't forget about it. My first language was C plus plus. And at that time we need to use semicolon to separate the lines. And the semicolon is something we really need to easy to use. It's my first month of programming. What's wrong with my code? The logic is fine, but it just needs a small semicolon. No, we don't need a semicolon anymore, so you are in a much better <laughs> situation. Okay, so everyone gets the real part. Uh, modify the show. Yeah, so if, if, if you don't want to write it, you can copy my... Uh, no. Yeah, you can just down, down. Yeah, open. Yeah. For Windows user, don't use Notepad plus plus. No, no, don't no, don't use Notepad. Notepad plus plus is okay. Some language is okay. Atom is okay. Don't use the sound come with Windows. It probably won't work. So uh, that's ERB double. This is CS zero zero seven. Okay. Yeah. So. Into the show HTML.erb. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, just now uh, I put it so that the attendance is like stuck between yeah. some tables. <laughs> so I have to change the space again. It's, 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 uh, I'm, what am I going to do?
Uh, I just want to show you what I was planning for today. At the end of the day, you should have this one. So you can add as many as coaches or attendees you want. Yeah, so this this was I was planned, but I don't think we have time to cover that. So for now, uh, you just can try to first uh, you need to show the coach in the in the show page, and uh, second, uh, remember what we did to the attendance, and do the same for the coaches, and uh, this will be your homework. <laughs> and uh, I hope next call someone can cover this. Uh, they're going to have, have I don't know. And you are cu if you are curious, you are just go to the GitHub, my GitHub uh, page. Uh, this code, if you go to the master branch, you will have the latest one. If you check out, it will be the exactly the same that you can see what I did there. And if you want to see, actually for each step I made, the changes I made, I do a commit. Uh, where you can see the the difference each step what I did. So for example, the last one is uh, actually I had created different branches. It's different story. It's okay. So if we go to this one, so a lot at any number of attendees in UI. So if you go click on this, come on, come on, look. Okay, th then you can see the difference between the files. Let me do this one. Uh, speak. So the entire part is, is an add, which means I add the new line there. And uh, there is a minus, which means I remove those one there. And uh, actually, I, I sort of wrote some script for today. So I think I'm going to share with Sun and uh, she will upload. If you're interested, you can take a look. So here is this one that you can you see. It's Pretty much step by step. So now let's focus on the coaches. And we have half hour. Okay. No. Uh, is there any step you are not clear about how to do that? So after the show dot uh, HTML dot VRB, then you should modify the events model, which you need to add the uh, set nested attribute for some association. So after that, you need to modify your controller. So what what the other way to controller? Yeah, so first is the create the empty object. And then is your parameter y list. So that is what we need to do for the controller. And after that is the form, the actual form. Then you need to modify the form. Don't look at that. I'm not doing anything relevant. So let me... Uh, Okay, so here, this one. See this one? Ah, I think I will just upload the whole thing now. So it's in the
So if you go to the Google Drive and uh, under the notes folder, you will see this notes 002 and just open it. Just follow the step here, you should be able to add you know, coach. You don't need to look up, go to Google Drive. <laughs> I put the whole thing into the Google Drive. So. Yeah, the code, the instruction, the entire thing. So what happens here is just repeat, I just was said. Uh, first, I mentioned something is missing. So this part I'm referring to the show coach. And the next part it says you need to modify the events RB with this value. Ah, something extra. A lot is try. I have a lot is try here, which means we'll do the click remove. It will actually destroy the object in the database. The reason being is it's not a link to anywhere. This coach is only linked to this guy, so it doesn't matter. The question here is uh, for in your control, is that control the model? But in the model, in the events model, you have uh, two functions. One is uh, admin, and another one is students. I, I don't get the modern name for that. Uh, admin user and student user. Student and uh, the reason being is uh, both of this data is coming from user. And uh, they just, I think the last tutor, they just want to have a cleaner code in the UI. So you can do for uh, admin user, something like that. So that's why they create that. But for coach, there's no such category, right? So you can just, what you can do is just uh, if you go to the, if, uh, where is that? Let me show. I remove it. Did I remove it? Yeah, so here is the, the function you have, right? The uh, events the uh, admin user. And for coaches, actually, you can just do events the coaches. Because we don't need to differentiate that. The reason they have this one because uh, for attendance, actually the, the admin and the students are the same uh, association, and in the same association. So if you read the code for admin uh, user, you will see they have a, a search criteria on the user type. But well, I'm not saying the same. Most, oh, yeah. The reason I didn't say it is because of the tab. Let's go. So if you see the coach here, it will be uh, events or coaches.
It means when you submit the form, it will it will us. So actually, it's to do do you remember the, the log I show you is uh, the parameter thing. <laughs> I, I'm thinking a way to let, let me. Uh, another thing is you can something you don't know just search it. Then you have the official documents, but trust me. I mean, let, let me say if if I can rephrase this. Yeah. So basically, it means nested attribute allows you to save attributes on the associated record to the parent. So in our cases, you have events dot coaches or attendance, right? The attendance is the association. Event actually is our parent. Which means when we do events.save, it will allow you also save the attendance to the whole thing. Yeah, so that's why we have that. Otherwise, when you click save, it won't save. But actually, it does something more than just this, I think. Yeah, I'll just see it that. It's too long, I want you to read it. <laughs> so everybody should finish this part already. Right? Then the next one is... You can choose either you edit your form or edit your, your controller. It doesn't matter. Uh, for starters, one thing you can do is uh, every time you edit a file, uh, especially controller and uh, model, if you modify those file and the view file, you actually don't need to restart the server. So when I just start programming, one thing I will do is when I make some change in your file, I will just refresh it. So just make sure the thing I change is not it's not broken, or it's not going to break anything. So you can also do that. Otherwise, if you just uh, modify all the tree files, then refresh something field, it will be very hard to identify where it went wrong. In the Google Drive, just I don't know I couldn't find it in the Google Drive. Uh, go to the share with me something like that. Yeah,
go to your model. Yeah. CS 006. CS 006. 哎，等等一下，好像不是。啊 ，Notes 002. Under、uh, Notes. Ah,、uh, if you can't find the instruction file, is uh go to session seven under Notes folder. There is a、uh, Notes 002.
上课之前的。对对对。所以，如果你想看上，可以去这个活动。嗯。你们考试每个都行。嗯嗯嗯嗯这个是吧？这个也是吧？就是这个都在那个。对，这个都在那个。好、哦，谢谢。I think the instruction I learned there should be easy to follow. So uh, it's homework. So the homework you can finish up to you have the coach in the wheel, and you can add coaches with two instances. And uh, I hope they will they will have time for the the last part. And uh, just show you guys what I normally do for the backhand server. Uh, let me see. Okay. Uh, this is a private repo I did for with with my friend last time, and uh, you can see here there is a lot of like post and get requests. This is actually our backhand server API. That's why I mentioned. Uh, when I said the way we are doing stuff today is uh, normally not what I do. So this is what I do. So it's defined a long list of API which allows communication between devices. So uh, speak of which to be a programmer actually there's a bunch of stuff it's not like you need to learn but it's just it's good you have the experience with. So uh, in the GitHub, if you go to the uh, doc folder, there is a document called what to learn. And uh, so for starters, actually, uh, one thing is very important. You need to understand what's going on with your computer. And uh, some weird error will happen and uh, if you don't understand the basics of the computer it might 
not possible to debug at all. And then it's come to the boring part, algorithm data structure. This will help you with the prob problem solving skill. And uh, the rest is just some advanced topic. In the, in the future, you may want to pick up. And I think for us, you're probably more interested on the web stuff. So where is uh, the first step you have to learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript. It's the basics. It's the building block of web technology. So that's it. And uh, after that, it's something good to know, but you're probably going to use it someday. Is uh, some alternatives for your CSS. So I think you guys already see uh, SCSS somewhere in the code. So if you go to your, uh, what's that folder? <laughs> the application folder, then there is a uh, resource. I, I can't remember the, the let me, let me try get it. Yes, yes. So go to your app, then go to uh, assets, then you have this uh, style sheet, then you have this uh, SCSS. So that's really it's the pipeline. It will compile the SS, SCSS into a CSS. That's why you might also want to learn that. And another choice is the uh, LESS, so it's it's up to you which one you want to pick up. And then it's the JavaScript alternatives. So you have a uh, ES6. I mentioned it in the first class. So then you have TypeScript, which is a superset of ES6. Then you also have Coffee, uh, Coffee Script. So all this will compile your code into JavaScript. So this is some extended reading. And uh, the step two is, you probably need want to learn a full MVC uh, framework for the front end. So what we did with our application now, we actually don't utilize any uh, front end framework. We just rely on Ruby on Rails to render the stuff for us. But in a re real application, normally, normally nowadays, there are some components you need to use this. For example, uh, in the form, in the case, you probably need to implement the form with, for example, uh, AngularJS. And uh, AngularJS will be responsible to communicate with your server and uh, to create the actual object in the database. And in that way, you actually can reuse your server for other devices, like a desktop application, like a, a mobile application. So this is something you might want to pick up. And uh, then, I think this, this is pretty much all for the front end. Ah, I missed one thing. You probably also need to learn a UI framework, which will help you beautify the stuff. So there's two choices, I think. Uh, one is uh, Bootstrap, another is Y, I, I think. Y is from, I think it's from Yahoo. And uh, Bootstrap is from Twitter. So there's something there. And if you are like a professional in graphic design, then you probably want to come up with your own stuff. Then it's the back end. Uh, there is a lot of theory going on with the backend. So you need to understand the request response pattern. So basically it's your server, the HTTP post, the HTTP guest, uh, post, post, HTTP post, HTTP guest. That's its a uh, typical request response pattern. Then you also might want to understand what's a publish, uh, publish uh, subscribe pattern. So it's more like a post, uh, what that thing called? Push notification is a typical uh, pub sub pattern. And uh, then you need to understand the uh, network protocols. So, of course, more important is uh, 
the last three part, uh, cybersecurity, system design, and API design. Yeah, so that's a lot. So this course is just a starting point. There is, if you are serious about programming, uh, it's a long way to go. But it's not impossible actually. Uh, I know, I have a friend, he was from uh, He is a college dropout. So he started college one year. Then he dropped out of college. Then he joined a company. And within five years, he is an architect in a, I would say one of the largest IT companies in the world. So it's not impossible. OK. I think that's it for today. Uh, another thing I forgot to mention, uh, probably need to learn how to read the code. Learn read code. Read. Oh, you need to read yeah. code. Like a book. <laughs> like a storybook. Yeah, so you don't need to know, know the language, you can just read the code, right? I mean, maybe it's okay because it's very English based. Yes. It's not. Yes. Yeah, but, um, so, uh, once, once you start the uh, language, the, the next step I normally recommend people to do is to pick up another language. Okay. Then you can see the common element. And uh, then we'll pick up the third language, you know what's the question you're going to ask. Uh, what would be a good language pair that you recommend? After Ruby? Yeah, after. Any, I mean, what was your personal favorite? My personal favorite? C++. No, I don't no, know. No, 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 no. <laughs> Not Python? Oh, C Sharp, actually. Yeah. C Sharp. Anyone heard about C Sharp? No, I don't know. Like, I was asking, what can you use C Sharp for? Anything. Anything? It's a general. It's a very, like, Got like a rudimental kind of thing. It's, it's very similar to C and uh, Java. So it's a Microsoft's version of Java. Like I was asking my, my CS friend, like, what should I learn to start off? Because my angle is actually the end of it. So they're like, oh, I'm going to go with like C with the <laughs> Yeah, definitely not a C. <laughs> then what about CPD? Like, no. no, definitely not a C. No, you're gonna die. Okay, fine. Yeah. Do something like I'll get R and okay, so it's whatever. Or Python. Don't even think about Python. Python is a weird language itself. Why? Just Ruby is good. I mean, so in Python, how do you create an instance mm -hmm. of our object? I know. You probably don't know. Okay, so uh, the thing is, uh, for starter, I really want people to know is you should to try to learn a language which you can copy paste the code directly from a website and then write. Then in that way, you actually can have something working and you can gain the confidence. Python is not something you really can just copy paste to work because uh, indentation it matters. So, for example, you, even the uh, let let me show you. Something. Uh, okay, if I do something, uh, for example, like A B C, and uh, I do A B C, and uh, I do okay, no, I do this one A B C. Oh, you probably won't say it. So, if if you someone if you pay attention to my typing, the first A B C. The so indentation in front is actually use a type. And the second one actually uses space. And visually it's the same. But if you didn't choose the right uh, editor, then it won't convert this to automatically for you. Then to Python, it's different. It will create an error. 
Yeah, so that's why uh, Python is. I don't know why so many people is starting with Python, but it's not a language I will recommend. So, what would be the language that you would recommend to start with? Ruby. Ruby. Yes. But who's the uh, Ruby on Rails is one. I mean, it, actually, Ruby is a general yeah web application. Is a, uh, and uh, someone choose Python is probably they said they want to do data science stuff. And they have a. Uh, yeah, something Yeah, something like that. When, but actually, you can find a con counterparty in the Ruby too. It's not necessary to do it the stuff with Python itself. So what if I pair Python? What? I pair up. I mean, you said that. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, so it's. Because two, the two are very similar, isn't it? Yes. Especially the arguments and everything. Not really. Why? I mean, the way they argue things. <laughs> <laughs> it's similar language, so uh, the thing about language is so uh, the reason the reason I said you can start with one language, then learn the basics, then start and second one. Then you know what's the common question you're going to ask for a particular language. For example, uh, I was starting with Google Go. So the first thing I will ask is, like, how do I declare a variable? How do I declare a method? How do I declare an object? Things like that. Then it's also things like, uh, does they have pointer? So for starters, if this language says it has pointer, run away from it. Yeah, pointers. It's a C thing. So basically, you shouldn't start with your programming with C, C, C++, Objective C, or Swift. Swift also have pointer, and the Swift syntax is really weird. Yeah, it is. I tried. Yeah. So my point is, uh, for programming, start with something easier. So you can gain the confidence. Then pick a second sort of easier uh, language. Then you can compare these two. Then you know for a new language what sh you should be looking for. So I start with C. So when I pick a new language, the first question I normally ask them, what's the entry point? What's the mean function? So in Java, in C sharp, there is a mean function there. But then Ruby and the Python come along, no more mean functions. That's is something I need to cope with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so M A N. Oh. Yeah. So that's that's for C sharp and the I mean for the older language there is the entry point for for that thing. Even Google Go they come back to me. So for starters, any language with what that pointers run away. And uh, there is a uh, something called Type the language. So, like C, when you use a variable, you need to declare it's an int. So, it stands for integer. So, you can't run away from that. That variable only can be used to save an integer. If you try to assign a string to it, something weird will happen. So, in that case, uh, so you try Swift. Is Swift is a type of language or not? Technically, it's not. It's no, so so for example, if I if I remember correctly, if you start a thing with a particular type, you can't use that variable for another different type. I, I can't remember the detail. And the goal is that way. So, but some some languages they have this VRR. So like C sharp and the Go, uh, for variable declaration, it's well it can infer the data type from your your data input, but it doesn't make it a dynamic typing language. So Ruby, just stay with Ruby. So for Ruby, you can do this. You can have a, a come on, a equals to one. Then you can just change a equals to some string. But it won't complain. And you can even do it with something else. But if you do this one in, in C++, it's a lie. <laughs> Start somewhere. Yeah, start somewhere. Ruby is a good one. And uh, ask those guys to organize the proper Ruby course. Okay. One more thing. Uh, 
uh, do I have a guess? That's the website. Uh, let me let me know it works. Okay. Yeah. Okay. People don't know HTML, CSS, CSS, JavaScript, you can go to just WPS, yeah. Really entry level and really easy to follow this part. And uh, for Rails, you can just uh, go to this one, uh, railsgirls.com. Just Google Real Girls, Rails Girls. And so it has some, I don't know, actually half of my stuff I learned from here. And uh, another half is from this one, the Rails cast. But this one, uh, the, some of the code is out, outdated. You, some of this is based on three point something. So normally now it's real four, and uh, I think real five is coming out soon, if you haven't. Yeah, so the syntax and the functions and the modules are a bit different. Uh, so this is the, I think I also have a tutorial in the notes of today's document, so you can check on the authors for the beginners to learn the programs. Yeah. So questions, if you have questions, just drop an email to that lady or another two ladies. <laughs> They will figure out the answers for you. Okay. So thanks everyone for coming. Uh, this is supposed to be our last uh, lessons, but we we decide to get one more because we think we need to wrap up everything. And uh, because uh, when we design this course, we cannot too optimistic. We cannot just learn Ruby on Rails without knowing Ruby. So because we don't have the function there, so I can see a lot of you get confused in the class. So in, we will have another class in the uh, 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 the M12 stream, and we will wrap up everything and made a very simple app and uh, from the beginning, and then we will uh, teach you how to publish through the Heroku. So we help everyone will come in, and Amber will send you the details. So if you have any questions, can just email to us. We go one more thing to do here because uh, we sent our coach sent the two cars here. So because we <laughs> yeah. No, well, just one more thing. Uh, oh, it's not showing here. Uh, so as uh, she mentioned, so basically this this one is a very good tutorial. Uh, yes, I just. Yeah. It's, uh, you don't need to actually buy it, they have a free version. Uh, where, where is the damn free version? Yeah, free, free. No, it's not free. It's not free. I think. Uh, I, I can't find the link. Uh, they, they should have a link, right? No. Uh, just Google around. Free online free. Where is it? Oh, yeah, here. You go. <laughs> so just, uh, this is a really good tutorial. It covers from from to the end until deployment, everything. So, if you can finish this one, mm -hmm. I also put this a, link about seventy percent of the stuff is covered. Yeah. So I think our problem area is that the, the most important is that we do turn on Ruby, so you get lost. You can, we cannot read the code, so you just copy and paste without knowing yeah. why. So we hope everyone will come in for the last lessons and we'll wrap up everything. And we got some small gifts from our coach and tutors, please. <laughs> oh, thank you.
Oh. Nice. I put it in my office. <laughs>